Hey, what's it, second grade? So as you know, we've been talking a lot about fast and slow land changes. And here I'm seeing some really great examples of some slow changes in the Earth's surface. If you look at this rock that I'm on, you'll see that the rock looks kind of wavy and that there's all these little pock marks or holes in the rock all over the place, right? So that means that this rock has been exposed to the surface for a very long time and all the rain and wind and water flowing over it, having all the little pieces of rock, has smoothed this rock out and made it look very wavy. And all the years and years of rain hitting on this has worn away these little tiny pox in the, uh, in the surface of the rock. So this is an example of a very slow change. How slow? Well, look right here very closely and you can see this odd structure that has a, a central line and then all these little pieces coming off of it. At first glance, this looks like it might be nothing, but now we see that this is actually a fossil of an ancient animal that was buried in this back when it was mud and has since then, over millions and millions of years, turned into rock. So how long has this been out here? I have no idea, but I know it's been a very, very long time for it to change this slowly. Hey there students, Mr. Saul here, and today we're continuing our conversation all about slow land changes. And I'm here at my school behind me here, and I wanted to show you guys an example of some really slow land changes that can take place over a long time. Now, even though at school, this all this land was changed pretty quickly when they built the school, right? They had to level the ground, bring in all kinds of machinery. So that kind of land change can happen very fast. But there's another kind of land change that can happen very slowly that happens as a result of those natural processes like rain, wind, water, that kind of thing. So I'm gonna show you guys this driveway, this gravel driveway here at my school. And as you can see, it's on a hill. And down at the bottom of the hill on this concrete in the parking lot, there is a huge pile of rocks right here. Now, they didn't put those rocks there, no one did. So I wonder how they got there. Also, if we look on this gravel hill right here, I see that there seems to be some sort of path, some ground that's lower than others that seems to cut back and forth and back and forth. And then down here, I see all these rocks that are piled up on the concrete that must have come from this hill. So my question for you guys is, how did all these rocks get down here when they started up here on this driveway? And where did this path come from as well? Now, as you guys know, slow land changes, natural processes. Think about all the things that are happening on this hill that would make all those rocks end up down there at the bottom. And now I'm somewhere again in the woods and I've found a creek bed. So as you guys can see behind me here, the land is going to cut in on both sides and drop down to where the creek is. And if you see down at the bottom, there's all rock that's sticking out from the water. And then up above on either side, we have lots and lots of dirt, plants and stuff like that. So my question is, in this riverbed right here where I'm standing, where did all the dirt go? Right? All I see is exposed rock uh, in some water and then lots of dirt on this side and lots of dirt on this side. But I don't see any dirt on the rock right here. So what is taking all of that dirt and moving it away? Where is it going? What's causing it to, to leave? And thought I saw a turtle. So teachers, we're going to pause. We're going to talk about what would cause the land to be shaped like this and we're also going to talk about if this happened quickly or if it happened slowly and think about what natural processes would have contributed to making this creek bed look like this with high piles of dirt on either side and almost nothing in the middle. Hey learners, I'm here at the same creek as before but now I'm a little bit further downstream. And you can see I'm sitting on some rocks that looks like they broke apart a long time ago and now there's some space underneath. But what I also wanted to show you guys was how this rock has been eroded or pieces of it has been, has been washed away to the point where now there's these big holes that are all over the rock 
and these holes are perfectly smooth in their creation. This is smooth all the way around and through. There's no rough edges, no sharp spots like here where the rock was clearly broken. But here, it's very smooth going all the way through. So my other question is, what would have caused this kind of slow land change? What natural process would make the rock be totally smooth with holes in it that don't have any rough edges, unlike here where it was clearly broken off? So this is just another example of slow land changes that we need to think about and consider when we're looking at the shape of the land around us because we have to keep in mind all these natural processes that are constantly shaping the surface of the land and changing how it looks. And sometimes it can take so long that it can be lifetimes, lifetimes of time will go by before anyone could even notice a difference. So this rock, probably hundreds if not thousands of years old of water ru rushing over it, carving little tiny pieces of rock away. Really impressive when you start to think about how much time these slow land changes would take.